thank you so much for taking the time to do this. First things yeah, first, I suppose. Um, yeah, let's just get this going with how how overall are you, at the moment are you doing? Yeah, brilliant, man. Yeah, great. Um, really excited. We've done a couple of festivals now. Uh, so yeah, yeah, really, um, really stoked on the on what it's done so far. Uh, yeah, there's a few more to go. So um, yeah, just keep it busy. Roll in, I think. Yeah, keeping me anxious. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I, I, um, anxious yeah. about what? 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 What's? What's to be anxious about? I don't know. It's just you know what it's like. A, you know, submit your short film or whatever to these festivals. It's peer reviewed. You know, it's kind of getting um, real world feedback. Um, it's just something. I don't know what it is. I can't quite put my finger on it. It's the same when I go and watch them. You know, I, I went to Dead Northern uh, a couple of weeks ago and was just soon you know enjoying the shorts that were there as soon as mine came on i was just uh, i curl up and i don't know what it is yeah <laughs> oh goodness me yeah that, that I, I can i can picture exactly why that you might feel that way but what has the reaction been like um for the most part for you i think pretty positive like uh i think people think it's a weirder idea than i thought it was <laughs> <All right. laughs> and a weirder short film than i thought it was yeah which is kind of cool um and I think the reactions that I, I wanted from an audience are, are kind of coming through, I think, yeah. Um, yeah, like this kind of idea of like, you know, where it's, when certain moments hit, you kind of you want that reaction. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think this seemed to be landing as I'd expect, I'd as hoped, yeah. So. Have you had anyone uh, coming up to you, talking to you, like offering feedback in that in that regard? No, no. Usually, I've go. I've been to a couple of these festivals, but I've kind of been anonymous. So <laughs> that's the way yeah, to do it, isn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah. I've been sneaky and listening to, trying to listen to what people have been saying. Get a true, uh, true feedback. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because ultimately, you're right. If um, you introduced yourself as right a director of the the short, uh, there's you know people might clam up a little more. They might be a little more honest if they have no clue who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but overall, you're satisfied with what you've been able to accomplish this year. We're coming, you know, we're at the end of October 2023. It's coming to an end. When you reflect on the year as a whole feeling pretty satisfied with what you've done yeah absolutely yeah i mean it couldn't have gone i mean it was, it's gone really well i mean this is the first time i've ever had any kind of public funding from the bfi network which was great and uh first time i've ever gotten into fright fest which is a big feat for me it's bucket listing mm -hmm. um yeah and just the fact that to be able to shoot something i think is kind of i, I always mark that down as like a good year <laughs> yeah so yeah absolutely i mean if you just if if fright fest had been the only thing that alone you know is a good year yes absolutely yeah yeah completely agree um yeah and like there's so um fright fest is really interesting actually there's like lots of you know loads going on like mark kermode was there the day after we were there which is mental mm. um you know so it's, it's it's um sometimes you forget how big fright fest is you know um yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I know the festival well. It's in London. It's my city. It's where I live and spend my life. Um, yeah, and it really is one of those where you kind of un, un, almost almost as underplayed and undervalued for its size and what it offers and what it does every single year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I've I've been to Fright Fest a few times, and they but I've always only ever been. I've, I've only really been for certain films. So I've just gone uh, and only really gotten a glimpse of it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I th for me, I think that in itself is like massive. Uh, so I can only imagine like being there for the full festival is kind of like a, is a big thing. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, you don't look into getting, a, getting to be shown at Fright Fest, you ultimately earn it. And of course we are talking about your new horror short, my dreams have been dark of late, um, which does not necessarily give any indication of what it is. So I'm going to try and summarize it really quickly. It tells the story of a knight fleeing from battle, hiding amongst pillars of a temple, but finds himself trapped 
inside a suit of armor. And I'm going to leave it there because it is a couple of minutes. So there's no reason to be spoiling this. Just check it out. It is a unique idea with horrifying consequences. So, so talk to me about the early stages of your vision for this. What did it look like? I think initially... Uh, so my, my brother and I, we work very closely together. And I think initially we decided we wanted to try and do something that was, we'd, we'd just come off the back of like a 20 minute short and it was lots of different scenes, the horses involved, all this kind of stuff. It was quite a big mm. production and it was quite a lot of work. It was obviously it was a lot of work, but it was, we just wanted to kind of do something that was kind of sing, uh, singular in location, kind of perhaps even shorter than what it's turned out to be and all this kind of stuff. And we were kind of thinking about it and I'd, I'd come across, so I, I have tons and tons of references. Uh, I, I collect reference imagery all the time, I'm crawling through books all the time and stuff. Mm. And I came across um, this incredible artist called Dennis Forkas. And he's a, he's a Russian artist who kind of, he describes himself in, as working in Mediterranean antiquity, which I thought was like really fascinating way of putting it because I have this really kind of keen interest in that kind of area anyway. Mm. And uh, essentially I kind of came across his painting called A Feather Dream of a Knight Devoured by His Armour. And the just straight away, the two, that idea of Mediterranean antiquity and this kind of, this idea that, you know, this knight's being eaten by his, his own armour like just conjured the image that basically came out as the short. Um, and so I did a little, I did a little bit of like chasing, I chased him a bit to make sure it was okay. That I could base a short film on, off of his material, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, just put a script together and my brother and I worked on it a bit more. Um, yeah. And that's kind of how it came to light. basically. I love it. What inspiration. Um, was the original cut as short as it is? Because it's about, we're talking about four minutes here, credits included. So really just a little over three minutes long. When you kind of went through, what, what did the length initially look like? It's actually a bit longer. It was like more like five minutes, but there was mm. s- some moments I think that felt a bit slapstick. So we kind of cut those. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's funny because I think we were, roughly aiming for about two minutes. So we were way over. <laughs> um, but that was like our self-imposed kind of um, timeline. Yeah, our duration that we put on ourselves. Um, yeah, it just, I think it just felt right at the, at the, at the duration that it is. Like, you know, things seem to um, breathe a bit and like it has that chance to set uh, sink in a bit, you know. Um, well, ultimately, um, you know, you tell a complete story uh, very, very quickly and very succinct style. And you completely, as a viewer, will understand. Uh, you may or may not fully, you know, um, know what's going on, but you'll understand what this particular point in the start, this what this story is. Um, and that's 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 a successful short in my eyes. You don't come away confused. Um, but of course, we have and- Alexander Lincoln playing the knight. So, talk to me about casting him and what you got from his performance. Yeah, uh, well, it wasn't so much his cast as he was in the back of my head the whole time. Um, he'd, uh, yeah, he he uh, he's a fantastic actor, and he came to an audition for the short before, and that's how I initially met him. And there was just something I. I I don't know why, but he just stuck his face stuck in the back of my mind, and uh, obviously he didn't cast, get cast for that short. Uh, we went with Jack instead, Jack Forsyth Noble, who's a brilliant actor as well. But um, yeah, there's just something about Alex that I was just like, and he sort of seems he seemed to get it. He kind of understood like you know what what we're trying to do and things, and um, yeah. So then a few, you know, obviously I'm trying to drum up projects and stuff, and so. Uh, I've always kind of got him in the back of my head and I just approached him straight away and just said, Hey, like, uh, like I've had you pinned for this. I could, like, I can't think of anyone else. Like mm. I, don't, I don't want to use anyone else. I don't want, I don't want anyone else to be in here in this uh, short. So would you be interested? And he was like, luckily he was, yes, I'm, I'm available. <laughs> um, so is that. Yeah. 
yes yeah um you know there's i think to be honest i, I was fully prepared to make a bit of a scene i suppose uh <laughs> with my producer and stuff to make sure that we did have him like you know if it meant that we had to move the shoot a couple of weeks or this or that i was kind of prepared to fight for it um yeah so it worked out well then because he was very good yeah yeah absolutely his performance is incredible and and you know no notes (laughs) (laughs) notes. yeah okay Um, yeah short doesn't mean you know, it isn't the short doesn't mean there aren't a lot of challenges that come with that. Ultimately, as much as um, any other film you'd be creating, there are going to be a ton of challenging aspects to it. So, talk me through some of the more challenging aspects that you experienced creating this film. Mm, challenging aspects that's interesting. Um, I think, interestingly enough, like shorts are like you know, uh, for, for me, uh, the working with the DOP, Korshan, who was who's actually a long time, has been a friend of mine for a long time. And uh, we'd always like flirt with the idea of working together. And I think it's not necessarily a challenge, but it's certainly something you have to consider. Hmm. Where Korshan, I would say, is much further along in his career when we first met. And he's doing incredibly well. He's doing he was doing TV work for Top Boy. He was, he was, um, uh, yeah, he's, he's been doing all sorts of stuff that's mm-hmm. massive. And it was working with him who has an agent that's very protective of, of his career trajectory. And getting those things to lighten up, I think, certainly gave me some anxiety about mm-hmm. making sure that we, we got him. But also the challenge of like, you know, being, that kind of like really professional set and a professional director for for Korshan, you know, as much, you know, I I didn't want to be, I just didn't want to be like this guy that was kind of didn't, had no idea what he's doing and, you know, needed. So a a lot of preparation, um, which I think is naturally me anyway, but Mm. um, I think it just had that extra level of like, I've got to step up now, you know, working with, someone who's really good at what they do and I want to bring what I can do. I want to bring my best as well. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I get that. The last thing you'd want um, is them to be going away going, well, that was a little bit too amateurish for my liking. You, you know, you want to portray this professional environment and how strong your individual talents are as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and even down to just like almost basic needs as well, like, you know, but fed and watered and stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's been so many shorts I've done that you know, in the day, you know, what you just get what you're given. It's a slice of pizza and you go, <laughs> and that's, you know, it's a 16 hour day and you're like, okay, cool. Um, you know, so yeah, exactly. And uh, you, you know, uh, for someone that works in such a, at such a high level, you know, we're still independent. We'll, all, I think I'll always be independent in that sense, but uh, you know, you kind of want to at least cater for that, uh, or at least seem like you're trying. <laughs> yeah. There it is, yeah. isn't it? It's seeming like you're trying. It's putting effort in, um, which matters. Okay. From the challenging side, let's flip it over to things that you particularly enjoyed about this, um, creating this film. I think just uh, complete um throwing as basically i put all my ideas together and i didn't really have to throw anything away mm. um which i i think probably came a bit more naturally than previous work i've done and there's just something very natural about for me this and working on this particular short uh that it just clicked a little bit more than the last couple. Uh, it's kind of a bit intang- untangible, really. Um, mm. I don't know if it was just my head was in the right place at the right time, if I didn't have to worry about the money too much because we managed to find some public funding, you know, all these kind of other variables perhaps that might cloud or foggy up, a, you know, your sort of judgment or what you're kind of doing 
I think maybe were alleviated me a little bit and I was actually allowed to kind of really try and focus on the vision a bit more. You're saying tangible. Um, have you tried to put your finger on it? Because only that mind space, that head space, if it was such a positive experience for you, it's surely something that you would obviously love to be able to continue to do going forward. Yeah, I think I think it is um I think it's trust, actually. Mm. I think it's probably trust. I think it's the the people that I knew were there. Um my producer, Jamie, and working with my brother. My brother knowing Alex was on board, uh, sort of knowing Korsham was on board, it felt like I could like kind of let go of certain areas. Like, whereas, you know, in the past, certainly with extremely low budgets, you, you tend to be a bit of a jack of all trades, you know, you, mm. you know, turn it up with your, you've done some of the catering yourself or <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Um, Needs must. <laughs> I, well, absolutely. And, and you know what, if, if I have to do it again, so what, I'll roll my sleeves up. But I think just particularly this time, because I didn't, I think it kind of gave me a glimpse of that vision. And I think perhaps going forward, knowing that, I would make sure to concentrate on that a bit more than get bogged down with the, the logistics and stuff, yeah. I mean, even if you end up, I mean, even if you do end up getting bogged down by more logistics in the future, ultimately this experience will have been a good one, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, then talk to me about creating the effect of the crushing armor. Um, because you could have gotten away with this, I'll be honest, by not really showing anything. Just with sound effects, I think you could have gotten away with it, but that's not what you chose to do. So, how'd you do it? Well, I mean, it's interesting you, you say that because I completely agree. I think I was with the with the visual language. I chose to show very small amounts of it, mm. so that it was still suggesting, you know, still su su suggestory. I suppose is that word. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but still, like, kind of implying that that's happening, right? And um, yeah, but I felt like I really, I really felt like I had to just give that tiny bit of visual cue just to kind of give the sound that extra headroom to be able to run with you know um so we had i bought these ooh, like uh, 60 centimeter square kind of plates of aluminium and i just used a sledgehammer and, and kind of beat them up and i had <laughs> i had about eight or so per area of body that it would be in varying degrees of like crush so to speak and they were used by the uh, the brilliant team at untold to either as reference or as the actual um sorry as the actual like 2d plate um and kind of used it as stop motion yeah it it came out really bloody well it really really did um nice. <laughs> and as well, you saying that, you know, about how it's still ultimately, you, uh, there are elements that aren't showing. And I think kind of like the final shot, the final shot of that is a good example of that. You don't need to see it. You just kind of focus on Alexander's face and that will tell you everything. <laughs> Trying to not spoil anything, but, you know, it's such a short, short. Um, it's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying not to spoil it <laughs> mm -mm -mm. as much as possible. Was there anything or is there anything that you would have been you would have liked to have been able to include that you just weren't in the end, either because of time, either because of money or any other factor? Uh, honestly, no, no, I, th I think everything that I wanted was was there. Um, uh, there was there was a shot initially that we did. It was kind of like on this. It's kind of an homage to. Um, some of the older, like um, some of the Barry Lyndon stuff. Um, and it's like extremely long lens. And it was a shot of him running across the grass to the Temple Folly. Um, but, but particularly focusing on the fact that his sword hilt was empty. And that's all you saw. Uh, 
that was the one shot that we that Korshan said would we we'd need this this and this and took the budget up a bit more and whatever and it was the one thing that I cut but thinking about it it's sort of like my it's sort of like a my darling you know I kind of wanted it but you got to kill him so it's gone <laughs> so, yeah the the one thing I did lose and to be honest like I don't think it would have made any real difference it's just something that I would like to see um so I'm not like broken hearted by it yeah I I you, yeah, I get what you're saying. Uh, it, it, a scene like that will always add a little bit more weight, a little bit more substance to the event that's even the event that's creating this short only that will, will lead into the horror side of things more than anything else. But you know, when you are doing a short, you can cut it because ultimately this is still going to tell the exact same narrative. I presume you were quite conscious then of the fact that horror shorts in general are quite consumable, um, and people kind of want to just get on there for a couple of minutes and be scared. Yeah, I think so. I think it's, I, uh, I think uh, it's the extremes, isn't it? You know, horror comedy as well. You know, the punchlines ultimately. I think uh, that's kind of what I've found, particularly with the shorts, and the shorts I've seen in general at the festivals that I've been to that have been remarkable. Uh, follow that kind of similar pattern. There's kind of a bit, a bit of a a twist or a punchline or something yeah. that like kind of is yeah it is kind of like that uh, so yeah exclamation totally point I think, I think you're right exactly yeah yeah exactly. no it, it it it's uh it is the standard as you say um it's expected to a certain degree um so where the question is now um where are people gonna be able to watch this so ultimately you know um what's the plan going forward I mean, so obviously we've still got some festivals to hear back yeah. from, and that because of that we can't put it anywhere until we've finalised premiere status, obviously. Um, but I'm hoping eventually just it'll be online somewhere. Hopefully, one of the great like love to get onto Alter. That'd be wicked. But um, wherever we can, uh, yeah. But uh, I'll I think if if people follow like you know if they follow our social medias or whatever then there'll be plenty of announcements of where it'd be to, to view. Absolutely. Get those festivals out of the way. That's uh, the, a major, such an important aspect. That I think people don't um, often realise like how important that can be. Um, just because people go there, they see it, and they go and they talk about it. And even in this online digital world, uh, word of mouth still matters. Massively, yeah. Absolutely. The, the festivals are, are crucial. I mean, you know... Um, the witch won Sundance. If it didn't, I don't think we would have seen that larger mm. campaign for it. Perhaps I don't know. Maybe we would have, but if it didn't no, get it's... to Sundance, then 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 you know, it shone a spotlight on it. Exactly. Okay, you personally, then, um, what's next for you? I think, uh, uh, hopefully, another couple of shorts. Mm. Um, I think a bit more in depth, perhaps like uh, you know something still quite visceral, but uh, with a, perhaps a bit more, perhaps a bit more dialogue first off, um, <laughs> and maybe more characters and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, and then just take it from there, I suppose. Uh, I think there's uh, a couple of feature ideas that we've got. We'd love to okay. kind of start getting getting together, and yeah, um, it's all very. Uh, tentative at the moment you know it's all kind of still just figuring filing uh finding our way through the dark you know a little bit <laughs> but you were trying um and that's good to hear if people want to support you and what you do what can they do i think just um when the short is out go and watch it um mm. and uh yeah follow our socials and stuff for any other kind of bits and bobs really um do what you can do, folks. Um, independent filmmakers, um, help you out as much as possible. Um, and if you are going to be at one of these uh, many film festivals, make sure you check it out, basically. That'd be ideal if you could. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any big plans for the remainder of this year? Um, not really. Uh, I think we're just 
we're trying to finalize some of these short scripts and yeah. get them the best they can in the hope in the view to shoot next year i think this year we're kind of just letting the festivals finish for dreams and yeah take it from there normally i'd say at this point oh you can view it see it listen to it whatever but i can't really do this at the moment but just keep your eye on the future my dreams have been dark of late it is a very very good short that will leave you feeling a bit uncomfortable a little bit tight around the neck maybe um before you go, Josh, it is the end of the year. It is the end of October, should I say, the end of October, which means it's Halloween season, of course. So I wanted to gauge, what is your perfect Halloween night? Uh, hocus Pocus. <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. It's just one of those traditions, you know. Um, and it's a bit like a Christmas film, you know, like it, it, you watch like... A wonderful life it's a wonderful <laughs> life or something like that I d it's just i've seen it thousands of times it's just always been there uh so i have to watch it uh and um my mum's halloween bean pot which uh i've finally got the recipe to so <laughs> i'll take yeah. it it's good yeah no trick-or-treating <laughs> for me uh yeah um maybe a party i don't know we'll see <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Before before you go, Dad, but I have to ask though, because you mentioned Hocus Pocus. Thoughts on Hocus Pocus too? Fan or not? It was a tough watch. I think. Um, I I kind of see what they were trying to do. I think sometimes you have to let them lie. You know, it's like band reunions and stuff. I just it's there's something about it. it's like uh, do not quite work. It feels like something. You know square peg round hole kind of <laughs> of it um so not the biggest fan i watched it but yeah not the biggest fan you struck gold once the seam is dry move on um there it That's is it. yeah <laughs> josh yeah. best of luck for the remainder of the festival this year and we're putting your future you. ideas into making them a reality i look forward to seeing when my dreams have been dark of late becomes publicly available so everybody can start shouting about it and sharing that link but for now Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, cheers, buddy. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at gbhbl.com, our full website, where reviews, news, and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.